mention black metal, and those who have some knowledge of the scene will bring to mind a screeching cacophony produced by people wearing black and white face paint and spikes. In the 1990s, the world watched with horrified fascination as the black metal music scene in Norway and across Scandinavia spawned church burnings, murders, and suicides. Some have seen in the scene a deep-seated antagonism over what some Norwegians understand as the erasure of their heritage and identity by Christianity and the modern condition. Yet at its roots, black metal was always linked to a perception of nature, often skewed by ideology. Scandinavian bands with full makeup were filmed wandering through snowy forests. With Appalachian black metal artists, the link between nature and their music does seem more authentic, if only because it isn't tied up with some reinterpreted religious ideology. Many invest lots of times hiking and exploring in the landscapes around their homes. Those experiences then incorporated into the tapestry of their music. Their songs also become outlets to examine facets of Appalachian history, whether through politics of coal mining or violence between early settlers and native peoples. Black metal is a serious uh, business. It's uh, something that um, is more than just uh, musical style, at least to me. It's not like heavy metal, thrash metal or so, it's uh, something that goes way, way deeper. It is something special with the Norwegian black metal. But on the other hand, I would never say that uh, we have a kind of monopole on this kind of music. I think that for sure others, uh, other places on the world can uh, also make the same kind of music based on their history, their historical background. It's a kind of uh, black metal is most of all a special feeling, something you have inside, a kind of darkness, something which is very often almost impossible to explain with words, but through the music and the, the symbols we are using, the, through this uh, kind of expressing ourselves, we are making black metal. It's a musical style. Some artists are only using it for that. Everybody is not like me. For me, it's uh, my whole life and my uh, belief in general is very much connected to black metal music. But for others, other bands that I know, they are, first of all, mus musicians and they have chosen to play black metal. For me, black metal is more a kind of lifestyle. Black metal calls to those in isolation to those who bathe in the glory and majesty of nature. Black metal calls to those in desolation. I've consistently related to both feelings of isolation and desolation. Whatever mark is being left on the metal scene from what has been called Appalachian black metal is probably because from the, the authenticity of the music, the rich heritage that comes from living in the mountains, the, the hard life that families had growing up in, in years past, just working on, on farms, just being rural America, uh, the, there's, a, there's a strong tradition of that that comes through in the melodies and the, and the use of the instruments. And that in turn plays a role in the, the authenticity of the music. And I think that more than anything has caused it to, to stand out. The mountains, the rivers, the wilderness is kind of where it speaks, um, which, you know, also has a lot to do with the atmospheric black metal you know, overseas. So very similar, because um, our people love to be isolated. Um, and we are one with the darkness and the nature of things as well. I think there is a, a level of isolation for us out here. Um, just in, in the same sense that geographically we're isolated, we also are a little bit more isolated in terms of anyone being interested in this style of music. Um, it's pretty unusual at least in this southern middle Tennessee where we live.
if it's gonna be true and American, it shouldn't be Scandinavian. So, and connected to nature, while well, you have nature in America too, don't you? I don't really understand this connect. I think it's more important that the music is connected to your own nature. We are inspired in different ways by the environments we grow up in and, and by the culture that we grew up with. So if, if black metal is real, it should sound like where it comes from. It shouldn't be a copy. I mean, there's no point with an American band that sounds more Norwegian than, than Norway or more Swedish than Sweden. I think you should be inspired by by your own heritage, about what's in your heart and, and what is around. I'm European, so isolation and uh, represent outfits, you know, uh, from the area where you came from. It's actually nothing wrong with uh, black metal scene, you know. If you look in the Norwegian or Slavic or uh, other parts of black metal, we have our own outfits, which one we uh, represent, uh, where we came from. So isolation or representing uh, who you are, it's nothing wrong about that. It's truly who you are and where you came from. It's, it's, the, it's the difference between country folk, so to speak, and city folk just moved into the musical realm. People that grow up in the cities, people that grow up in more in more urban areas, they they have a different outlook on life. They have a different view of realities a lot of times than people who grow up close to the soil, so to speak, in the mountains and in the hollers and in the valleys and going down to the river and old buildings and, and, and such and the like. Living in these more isolated places, you yourself are more isolated, you are more set apart from societal norms, uh, you don't feel all those pressures, you can travel just a few minutes and be out into nature and be completely by yourself uh, with your own thoughts. I think this lends itself to the black metal style and really gets to the heart of what black metal is. Um, being closer to nature, being more isolated. We have, you know, our musical uh, heritage here in Swedish and Norwegian folk music uh, has a certain feel to it, of course. And that has, you know, it's... Uh, I think you can't... You, you cannot replicate that anywhere on Earth. You know, living in, like, you're from Beijing or something, you want to play Scandinavian black metal, I think that is impossible. But I think you can make Chinese black metal or American black metal and, you know, that doesn't mean it's bad, but you can, you know, make it sound Scandinavian and not be, you know, have that, you know, history behind it. I don't judge anyone. I'm not the kind of people who say that you have to be honest about this, you have to do things in full. If you're not uh, living uh, this uh, kind of lifestyle 100% so then you're not a real black metal musician. Uh, I don't look at it in this kind of way. I think uh, it's, it's really against my own uh, belief and my own philosophy because I mean that all people should choose their own way in life. Do whatever you what suit yourself the best. Everybody can make black metal if they want to. Uh, I wouldn't say there is necessarily a support structure. Um, by its very nature, uh, black metal is very individualistic. Um, 
it really is developed by the individual and not by a group or a movement and being in these rural areas I think helps you create what black metal is supposed to be much better than uh, in urban areas. There definitely is a community of people nowadays with the onset of social media, with um, YouTube and Facebook and Instagram and all these things that have developed now that, that was so much different than when I was first getting into the metal scene. Everybody knows everybody now. So we're all able to have this somewhat loose connection and find each other more and lean on each other for support and be able to, whether that be artistic support or just support within the community, making friends, finding people that are like-minded and realizing that you're not alone in how you feel that comes through your music. Um, so there definitely is that, but, but I think at the same time also we, we hold on to that, it, the fact that it is isolated because that's how we felt when we got into it. We felt isolated, we felt alone, and we felt we were different than other people. Um, so when you find that in others that feel the same way, it's, it's a cool thing, um, but you, you don't necessarily forget where you came from. I mean, I grew up at a very young age due to my older brothers, what they're listening to, to heavy metal, things like that. Uh, so. There was always some things in that that I was drawn to. As I got older, got more into the extreme side of things, death metal earlier, death metal and eventually black metal. And you know, it's one of those things you're drawn to that you you search for. Uh, you appreciate the music you find comforting, for lack of a better term. And I, I mean, it's something that happens naturally. It's not a it's not something that I don't think that can be forced. Uh, maybe, maybe there's a way to sugarcoat it and make it more appealing to the masses, but that's totally losing the essence of black metal in my opinion. Black metal is not just a European phenomenon. Actually, it is quite the opposite. A black metal scene or movement has been slowly building in what some would consider the least expected place, rural and Appalachian America. For some, that may seem quite odd, but for those who understand the true meaning of black metal, it does not sound so far-fetched. Black metal has always been about authenticity, so looking at the Appalachian black metal scene, and more importantly, listening to the bands there, the first thing one notices is that they seem to have reached out and achieved their own authenticity. Living in, living in rural America has definitely influenced my writing in that I, I use that my surroundings to influence me intentionally uh, when it comes to just taking a break from the music and stepping away from it I will often get away to to hike or just drive around in the mountains and just enjoy the outdoors and the nature uh, often go to even museums and, and experience what it was like to grow up uh, and, and, and look at the heritage of the mountain life and then I'll let that play a role in in my writing, uh, I'll let that plant seeds and ideas in my head to go beyond what what might already be there for a song or, or a lyric. The authenticity of, of black metal is what ultimately attracted us to the genre. Uh, we feel that you know you get into the the muck and the mire uh, with with black metal, and you know you dive into the lyrics. You kind of take you kind of take a. a a step into the shadows and get in there and, and you get emotional with it, it, get, it becomes painful. Um, you know, it, it's it's very, I don't want to say like the realist genre of music, but it, it, you know, it definitely takes a step way further than most, uh, most music does. So, you know, 
that's that's why we opted to to express ourselves through this genre because it just it made the most sense for us and it was it was uh, somewhere where we could express things to a point where we felt satisfied with with the the lyrical approach and the music to it. My music cannot be divorced from nature, the animals. We uh, when I write music. Usually within my mind, I'm seeing the animals. Uh, I take a lot of inspiration from the uh, independentness of the goats. Uh, and it's helped me a lot through the years. I think authenticity is important in that um, I, I don't necessarily want to reduce the our expression of the art form to lived experiences, uh, but I think it plays a very primary role that can't be ignored. Where I'm from, you are surrounded by old, decaying industries. Uh, the largest exports here were coal and steel, and those industries have very much since died. Uh, my my great-grandfather actually had a small coal mine uh, many years before my dad was born. Black noise or any kind of music is not um, proper to any country or local parts of the, uh, any local part of the world. Um, we're talking about Norwegian black metal, or we're talking about Floridian death metal. We're talking about German thrash metal, etc., etc. You know, black metal is really nothing if there isn't a truth involved in it. Uh, it's a serious form of music. Uh, typically the messages contained within them are very serious. Um, they have to have some reality to them. It's not just uh, fantasy. Even if some of the aspects of a particular band uh, have fantasy within that, it is simply a representation of something that is is real or can be real or is uh, being sought out to be real and much better than other forms of music i think black metal uh, lends itself to that black metal is not an escape from reality it is a way for people to deal with the dirt of life, so to speak. As we get older, we deal with the death of family members, we deal with loss, people lose their marriages, they lose their kids, they get sick. And all the things, at least for me, all the things that you remembered from when you were a child, especially in rural America, they're not really there anymore. Thing, you know, Businesses have closed down the old generation that we remembered, that we looked up to, is gone. So I think at least, you know, you know, or you could also look at the fact, for some people maybe it's the loss, the further loss of certain uh, aspects in nature that aren't there anymore. I think a lot of it is, is comes down to the same thing, that we're, we've experienced something that we've lost in reality. And it hurts. Everything speaks to a forgotten splendor that is long since past. Most everyone that I knew growing up um, around us was unemployed. Uh, no one knew the privilege of leaving or having goals or dreams to work towards. Uh, many gave in to despair. Um, our area was one of those very heavily hit by the prescription uh, drug epidemic. It was either claim what felt like your cursed birthright and, or try to escape in any way that you could. I used to go explore abandoned coal mines, quarries, or anything like that. <clears throat> or I would just get as lost as I could in the woods. All of this carves a space for black metal uh, within. Once black metal finds you, it, it fits perfectly with everything you are and everything you were missing. I think we have quite different feelings, different opinions about uh, what's lying behind those of us who 
who grew up with this and uh, also you might come in to learn to know this music uh, later on because it's for sure it's lying history behind this but most of all we are talking about uh, a musical style from the beginning as I understood it it was uh, be yourself 100% uh, don't care about others, you could do, just do your own thing. It was meant to be brutal, evil, aggressive, against the society, against the church, and uh, most of these elements are still there. Growing up in a rural area, you have much more of a connection to, to nature, you have much more of a connection to um, history, uh, culture, that uh, surrounds you, but again, you're not pressed upon so much by society or what is what is popular. Whatever is popular takes much longer to uh, arrive where you live, especially in, a, in the United States, where the rural areas are so uh, separated uh, from the rest of the country. It, it gives you a sense of independence. It uh, forces you to rely on yourself and when we're talking about extreme metal or black metal you really are even more so alone because the people around you there may not be anybody uh, within 100 miles or 200 miles or 300 miles that even understands what you're doing or how you see things and so you really have to develop those things yourself. And black metal is the perfect uh, mode of transportation for these ideas. Uh, an outsider can definitely get into it and relate to it if, I don't want to say brave enough, but if they are um, curious enough to dive into a black metal uh, song and if they can get past the way it sounds uh, musically and vocally, if that's something that re it, it's something that repels most folk, at least in this area. Um, but if you get in there and, and, and uh, read the lyrics and, and feel the you know feel the pain that's in them and the positivity and, and the light and darkness that's in them, uh, an outsider could definitely enjoy uh, the genre for sure. We kind of make the music for ourselves, and if anybody else digs it, then that's cool. But it's more for ourselves. Black metal, at least in the what has developed in America over the last ten years or so, and I think it's still coming into its own, is a way for our generation to deal with that um, because that's really all we have left to do is kind of look back. I grew up in a small country church, so to speak. It was in town, but there was less than a hundred people. It had the feel of an old time church with an organ and an old lady playing the piano and that goes back to the whole thing about the things that were in the past aren't really there anymore. That in, infiltrates everything you do around here, whether you want it to or not. A lot of us people in the metal scene are even into like old style country and bluegrass and mountain music and things like that because, and folk music because that's, that was part of our childhood. Before all this came around, before we got into metal, that's what we had. So it definitely colors that because that's a way to envelop that sense of loss in your music, but to also put in something that is like a, like a comfort, something that you can add in that in the midst of whatever darkness you're feeling when you're writing the music, you can throw that in and it, it feels warm and good at the same time. It hurts at the same time in a good way because it's, it's gone. So it definitely colors the way I write things because how can it not? It's part of my DNA. It's part of what makes me who I am. I grew up with it. And I imagine anybody that had the same background, you can't escape it. And why would you want to? It's, it's a beautiful yet melancholy part of your life that feels great to think about, but also feels horrible to know that things like that are gone and the world has changed. It's not like it was when you were six years old, when you were 10 years old. The world's a different place.
in the U.S., sure, there's some amazing nature. Um, so if you're inspired by nature and you live in the Rocky Mountains or in Canada in some places, or Northern California even, or upstate New York, I mean, there's some amazing mountains, Appalachians, yeah, you go on forever, but some real great places. So if you're inspired by nature and you live in nature, it doesn't matter where you're from. Uh, and with Europe, the biggest thing for me, I mean, I have European heritage, so it was kind of a connection for me to see a lot of the, the history here. Um, where I live in a 75 mile radius, I can't tell you how many castle ruins there are, for example. I haven't seen them all. I've seen many, many of them, but I'm still discovering more. And um, just spots in nature, little things. It could be an old cemetery, um, an old memorial, things like that. And I mean, I'm always discovering them. Since I do a lot of fishing, I, I'm often checking out new places to fish. And usually that involves like driving off the beaten path to uh, these small roads. They're called Eigenlege Funliga Fly. I think that black metal that is made here has a certain sound that cannot be copied. Yeah, it's kind of amazing. And you cannot replicate that. No, wow. you try to. You're American. You should do it. American. Blackmail. Your culture will have an incident or an influence, but it depends on your character as well. I'm going to take, uh, for example, um, Terratism, that band from um, North Carolina, if I'm not um, mistaken. Um, those guys, especially G Giles, Giles and Giles, um, are really deeply connected within the occult, within uh, what they preach. They practice what they preach. And you feel it in the music, and there are more. There are that feeling, that eerie, that cold, um, that mysticism that you want to have in a black metal band. Um, but they're from the U.S., so I don't think it's a bit a problem if you are from the U.S., from China, from blah blah blah. It's from to me. It's it's what you have in in here. In here. Not where you're from, not on which label you are, and not who's listening to your music. It comes from the heart, from the soul, from honesty, not from a geographic whatever. For me, black metal must be both an escape from reality and a way of understanding and coming to terms with your reality. One without the other leaves you chasing fantasy and becoming addicted to it, never processing the pain of your reality. Uh, if you take the other way, uh, too much reality without escape, you may not last long enough to overcome your reality and fall into its grasp. I try to inject the beauty of our mountains, creeks, and fields into my songwriting and art, uh, along with the desolation, the loneliness, the hopelessness, the darkness, anxiety, and claustrophobia. No matter what the subgenre or the intent of the art, those threads will always be woven into all art that I do whether it isn't intentional or not. As I've said, it's my birthright. Like, there's nothing more bleak than living in the Midwest, um, especially in the country in the Midwest. To my left, outside my house is a cornfield. To my right is a cornfield. Behind me is a cornfield. Uh, in front of me is our driveway. Go up the driveway, there's a cornfield. There's nothing around. I have to drive half hour to get to the nearest town. So yeah, there's nothing more bleak than that, and that has definitely inspired me. I think that's what you said about this metal phase, especially with this black metal style. I try my best to write from my heart, and I do definitely think that living here has colored it in a more bleak way, that I can capture this kind of, you know, gray and dark style of music in a better way than some can. This has, we have a human mind, 
extremely uh, advanced. We have the uh, capability to um, reflect over our own lives, over life and death. Uh, the, uh, we have a kind of morality. Uh, uh, we don't share the same uh, standards always, but uh, we are talking about good and bad, uh, what's right, what's wrong. Uh, in this uh, world uh, where the, we, the humans, are making such a lot of laws, so, such a lot of rules, uh, I'm coming in and trying to explain what I am standing for. Shortly, uh, I believe in uh, each, every single people, every single human being, every one of us, we are worth the same, basically. But it, uh, what's important is what we're doing out of our lives. I don't believe in any kind of supernatural gods. Uh, I don't believe, uh, I'm not praying to someone outside myself. Uh, I try to find uh, my strengths, my, the power to live, uh, energy, um, inspiration uh, in myself and uh, in my surroundings, in the nature. For many people, the rural America and Appalachians are known mainly for providing the beautiful backdrop to the film Deliverance. But this world of hillbillies and rednecks is also a world of beauty and of environmental destruction, opioid abuse, and heartless exploitation. This combination of natural beauty, environmental destruction, human suffering, and dogged persistence could make it an ideal nursery for extremism. In the case of rural America and the Appalachians, it has found an outlet in extreme music, and especially for black metal, which thrives on juxtaposition of the ugly and the transcendent. Everybody has a different life, a different. Even though you have, even if you have the same experiences, uh, if you have a similar path, a similar career, um, each life is different. Each person lives it differently, and uh, the culture does quite it's a bit of work in that as well so but yeah I see I see your point yeah, like um, if somebody had the same belief system or um, lived a similar life yeah maybe they could understand uh, what we want to express um, for some people most people it would be kind of extreme for us it's just um, I'm talking about them thrown here not black metal in general um, lived experiences so we're not talking about fantasy or um, making a evil um, Harry Potter version um, so yeah if you lived or have the same belief system that we do you might understand it that's a helping factor I think people that have lived a, a mountain lifestyle or a rural lifestyle will connect with it more quickly. Uh, they might be able to associate with it on a, on a deeper level. I, I know from messages I've received online and, and through email that there are other people who live in, in city, in larger cities, uh, even in other parts of the world, other countries, who have been able to connect with it and appreciate what I've, I've tried to do. Uh, I would say that happens with most other bands. That when you when you pour your heart and soul into it, you you hope that it connects with people, uh, even those that have not lived the same kind of lifestyle, because it, it gives other people some insight to what you're trying to do or what you're trying to say. I don't necessarily have a a message that I'm trying to convey as much as use the music as a artistic means of expression. Um, I have different different songs that I feel like convey different emotions. Some of those are influenced by Appalachian life. Some of them are influenced by my religious background and, and what I believe. Uh, I, I do feel like that, that at times sets my music apart from other bands within the Appalachian uh, metal scene, especially using some of the black metal influences within that. So to say that there's a specific message, I really can't other than I just hope that people can experience a little bit of nature through my music, some of the isolation, some of the some tranquility, some of the aggression that's in it. We don't have a concrete message. You know, we do put a lot of our 
heart and soul into the music and we do, you know, put our experiences and our passions into it, but there's no overall message. We don't really print lyrics and we kind of want the listener to get what they want out of it more than us kind of tell them what they should get out of it. But, so yeah, I mean, that's kind of it. Music is a very personal thing. The way I relate to music might not be the same way someone else relates to the same style of music and even though we both might like it. As far as the outsider goes, the, the person that doesn't get it, and there's a lot, that's the majority of people, don't get it. Is there any way they can relate to it? I'm not sure. I'm not sure there's a way people can relate to it because you're, it, I'm not sure why God made humans the way he does where you either like certain styles of music or you don't. I have no idea why I liked metal more than something else. I just did. So to say that the outsider, I'm not sure the outsider could ever relate to it. If they have, I certainly haven't met anyone that has ever, as they've grown up, has never come to like extreme metal or black metal or anything like that. You either got, you it either caught you when you were young, or you never get into it. Um, and then even then, I don't think the message can be really understood by outsiders because they don't view the world the same way. And if they if they do, but they're not into black metal, they might be into other forms of extreme art that I might not understand. But maybe we can relate on some other level. But as far as the majority of the majority of Americans or, or normal people understanding it, they don't seem to. And they don't have to. We want them to understand it because to us it seems as natural as breathing air. But I don't think the outsider is meant to relate to this music. And this has been said many times before, but this music really chooses the people. People that listen to this music, create this music, um, didn't choose to do it, they were chosen by the music. They started down a particular path and this is the end of that path or the beginning of the end of the path. For everyone else, this part of this path is inaccessible. I don't know that it's meant to be that way, but it just is. So. The Outsider, it doesn't really matter. It's not something you can, you can learn. It's either in you or it isn't. with the broad vision of what uh, we are delivering to the masses. Um, our conception uh, of how we view the world as it is and all this chaos and all this craziness that is going around, we deliver this message to the crowd and they will pick it up. They will understand exactly. That's what we're trying to do. To people to understand and to see all the problems in life. Black metal is kind of selective, but it's it's wide enough. It's it's wide enough for us to operate in. If it's from the heart, and people can tell it's from the heart, um, music and lyrics and vocals, all of those. If you if they can tell, they're gonna resonate with it. It might take time to realize what's trying to be conveyed, but in time they'll resonate with it. I truly believe that. I remember specifically just a story from the, the rural areas is when we were going to do a photo shoot when we were fully, we used to do corpse paint, like we were like terrifying people on like a nearby walking trail because they had no idea. We tried to laugh and wave and be as kind as possible, but the imagery can be can be uh, jarring to, to say the least. So it's, you know, and over time we, we figured out that as we got older, it was something that we cared less and less about. As far as the darkness goes, I don't think it has to be that for sure, um, you know, because 
you know the way a song sounds until you until you get in and take a look at what the message is. You'll never know if it's dark or not. Uh, but but it t it has a tendency to sound that way one way or the other. If you're a complete outsider, you c you cannot relate. It's an extreme music style. It's an uh, it's often like you know extreme messages. And for me personally, it's it's not a concern if you know people from the outside can't relate. If they can, well, good for them. <laughs> um, yeah. I believe that uh, everyone who wants to listen with uh, an open mind can get something out of black metal music. It's uh, for sure it's a special style, it's a special way you know, for an artist uh, to express himself. But I don't think that you necessarily has to know the history. You don't know to have to know the whole background of the black metal uh, uh, style, uh, gender, to understand it. But uh, you might have uh, different experience uh, while you're listening to it. Uh, I think so. But if you're into the dark, uh, mysterious side of the world. If you're worshipping uh, human mankind, but you also like to put some kind of religiosity into it, even if black metal is uh, basically anti-Christian, anti-religion, but it's also a kind of uh, religious uh, feeling in it, I think, uh, a kind of romantic feeling. No, it's not a concern to me, because at the end of the day, I'm, gonna, I'm going to make the art Feel like God has led me to make, and that's to make art with a with a message. I can't sit around and not have everything inside of me try to get out. If I try to do that, I go insane. I can literally feel my skin crawl. I can't leave it sit inside. It has to come out. So at the end of the day, whether people understand it or not. It's not going to change what I do. You run a, a big range of messages within this style. Um, everything from hardcore Satanism to um, nature-focused lyrics to um, just these big epic um, poetic sagas to what we do, which is um, you know based on our faith and and. and um, God-focused lyrics and that sort of thing, um, but I think there's something out there for everybody. So I think even if, uh, even maybe if it's not something you personally lived, you can find something to connect to within this style of music somewhere. Black metal isn't made for everyone. Basically, it's uh, kind of music uh, that sh at least should come straight from the heart of the musicians and uh, the bands. The mountains and geographic isolation of Appalachia have created an artistic movement. But this movement is spread over a sprawling region that incorporates 13 states and a broad regional diversity. Appalachia's black metal bands reflect that variation, with general differences in style and perspective. Yet these bands are connected, both thematically and in many cases, through collaboration. Just listening to them shows that their shared lyrical themes and collaborations have created an artistic movement that is leaving an indelible mark on U.S. black metal. Slaves B.C., Twilight Fauna, Ulfrin, Vials of Wrath, and others are blazing a path and creating a new musical tradition in the mountains of Appalachia. I want the listener to walk away um, knowing that there's more behind the veil, more than meets the eyes, that, you know, that the concept had an impact on it, maybe live or at home while listening to the CDs or the vinyl or whatever support they have. I don't want to uh, impel, like, impose in their heads uh, some kind of doctrine neither. That's my business. We don't want to impose anything. We just want to denounce and uh, spread what we experience in our belief system and uh, what comes through our fingers, our hearts. That we have a creation in which we live in and something's not right with it. And it needs to be put back to where it once was before it was broken. And that, I hope, is something that people can take away from our music, the lyrics that we write, 
and when they read the poetry, when they hear the music, it, it gives them a sense of hope, even though we live in a depressive atmosphere. I feel like what a lot of people miss about black metal or extreme metal in general is just that um, we're not all that different, you know? We're taking all of the things that society likes to sweep under the rug and pulling it out into the open. Um, and I think that's really liberating for a lot of people because you're facing this thing that you're not really allowed to talk about, um, or at least it's considered taboo. Um, so yeah, I feel like that, that could be liberating for a lot of people and that's what's missed in a lot of cases. When I write for Slaves BC, uh, specifically lyrically, I'm not considering the possibility of what I'm writing will ever be consumed by anyone. I have written what, I, what I've what i written because I needed to write it, because I had to get it out of my mind. Many of, many of our lyrics were things that I wrote in shame or with pain too deep for me to ever consider sharing it with anyone. So at their inception, I consider nothing but my own heart, my own mind, my pain, my sanity, and my God. When we uh, make this music, uh... I think it's a very personal thing. Uh, I, I think it's a good thing if uh, people like my music, but uh, uh, most of all I'm making this music for my own sake, to get some of my inner dark feelings out. Music. Um, Old Majestic Winter has always been focused on um, a light in the darkness. Um, so we have always written about um, personal, heavy, dark subjects for us, but there's always a glimmer of hope at the end. Even our darkest, most um, bleak writing that we've ever done has always had something that points back towards hope at the end. And um, of course for us, the main message for us is that there is hope and joy to be found in Jesus Christ. And that's the way to come to Father God. And for us, there's nothing more important than that, and that will always shine the brightest through what we write. As long as, long as we create a gateway to allow a person to step into the music, to see it for the, the darkness, to see it for the light, um, you know, ultimately, if, if, you, if you can uh, find hope and, and peace and Jesus or just anything to get you through a tough time, we'll consider it a success. I want people to walk away after listening to the music that Symphony of Heaven does. I want people to walk away and be challenged in their thinking. I want people to walk away and understand that this is my heart, what I put out and what I, the music that I write and the lyrics especially are things that are dear and personal to me and that if it's a song that deals with darker aspects of life, I want them to know that they're not alone in feeling that. I want them to know that there's other people out there that have felt the same torture, that have felt the same darkness hanging over their head, have felt the pain of life, have felt the scars digging in deep. And to know that they have somebody who can come alongside them and put their arm on their shoulder and say, Hey man, I've been there. I understand. Whether or not we view the same spiritual worldview, whether or not we view the same political worldview, that's what I want. I want people to know that there's somebody there that understands. I've never really considered the music to be something that someone's going to take a message from with, with this band. It's a, uh, there's no real message to it. I mean, there's topics that vary in songs. There's a message maybe about the ego and, you know, maybe someone can take a message from that and learn to keep their egos in check. But I think the people that need that are already playing in bands and they're far too gone. 
uh, it's more of an an atmosphere I like the music to leave that's what I get out of albums I really appreciate when it puts me in this uh, an inner journey from the atmosphere that can be highly conductive with your surrounding you know in the right environment in the right listening mind frame it can take you places I, I, for me if, I, if I'm in silence especially in nature uh, I get a lot of inspiration from that. I get a lot of ideas musically. I start hearing music in my head. Sometimes it's an annoying song that gets stuck in my head that I can't get out. But often I'll get some really good ideas out of that. Ideas that I'm really happy with. And, you know, it's a sort of a healthy thing to do for the musician's mind, I think, is to sometimes just do nothing. Sounds kind of funny, but it's, it's absolutely true. To most people, mountain music means dueling banjos or fiddle music. Appalachian black metal artists often use these instruments, but they are deployed alongside blast beats, shriek vocals, and waves of distortion to create a sound that invokes epic mountain vistas and a long-suffering people. I don't know how you don't pull influence from really one of the larger origins of black metal. Um, geographically but at the same time it's a completely different environment when it comes to black metal in the states it, it, this is such a a um, less mainstream genre here you know you, you can see famous world-renowned actors um, in Norway like in commercials with black metal bands Norwegian black metal bands playing and performing and it creates a huge impact uh, it, it, so it just creates a different dynamic, dynamic, I think. I think that a lot of people haven't, that, that are going to be in our fan base or the people that we're going to communicate with haven't experienced metal in the States at all. I think that uh, Norwegian black metal, the beginnings, when you go back, you know, to the early, like, Wrath of the Tyrant, Emperor stuff, maybe early Immortal, uh, and maybe even before that, Frost Harder, all those bands, they they set they set something in motion that actually grew out of it based on the punky stuff, the more thrashy stuff. And then once it got to here, and now we have cultivated it into um, kind of a mix of like the American thrash and the folk sounds and uh, I think that, um, I mean, this is my personal take on it. Um, I think that nor true Norwegian black metal is a very distinct sound, um, but it is a very noticeable sound. And I think that American black metal um, almost allows a little bit more breathing room, a little bit more um, of an opening for experimentation and. Um, to follow what you feel should be done in the music. Um, I know for us, we have always considered ourselves experimental from the beginning, so um, we're glad that we can make black metal that still ends up being anything we want it to be. Um, and we have that freedom, I think, within our genre to um, open that up to wherever we want it to go. Some of it is wonderful, and I must acknowledge those that first crafted the rough ideas for the rest of us to build off of. But for me, that's all it was. It was an idea, a crude foundation. Black metal expanding out to different genres, different countries, different sexes, genders, religion, races has allowed it to go places that other genres cannot, in my opinion. At least not to the same degree. American black metal has so many different cliques and subgenres and ideologies. Some try to copy the true Norwegian black metal formula, uh, but some are taking black metal and they try to inject it with capitalism. Uh, some take their very backwards and outdated bigotry uh, and use black metal both as the vessel and the justification for their hatred. Uh, some use black metal to make art. Instead of using it like a photocopier, 
They use black metal as the brush or as the pigment. This is where I feel like I fall in the vast spectrum of American black metal. I think Norwegian black metal probably has different musical influences than um, American black metal. I think in Norway they might be a little more connected with nature. Um, nature might be more an important part of their life and their culture. Uh, in the United States I think that we are more influenced by death metal as far as musical style so that affects the way that we approach black metal uh, so that is a little bit different culturally in Norway they have thousands of years to uh, draw upon and here in America it's one of our weaknesses in that respect that we don't really have our own culture we are a mixture of cultures um, as far as similarities I think that the ideas of warfare and being a being a warrior being an individual um, independence, uh, independent thought, even the idea of hatred is a pretty universal idea that is part of every single human being and it's universal wo worldwide and so I think that those are the things that really fuel a lot of black metal and that would be black metal from from Norway or from the United States uh, or anywhere really. I think those things are all pretty common. I would have to say for the most part American black metal is different from true Norwegian black metal uh, as far as lyrically um, there's not a lot of the same ideas. There are within some bands but there's also a branching out of lyrical influence um, beyond that, I think there's not a, a lot of difference I can see. Uh, maybe within the Appalachian scene, um, there are different instruments that would be used that are typically not found on, on the Norwegian albums. Uh, instruments like banjos, uh, mandolins, uh, things like that that are more localized to the Appalachian scene. Um, so that, that might be one of the biggest differences I hear between at least with the Appalachian metal, not necessarily the American black metal scene as a whole. Uh, to say that they're similar, it's probably more of just a emphasis on atmosphere. I mean, in general, I feel like what separates black metal from most other genres of metal is that there's such a strong emphasis on atmosphere. And so that alone is the, the big tie-in for me. Uh, no matter where the music's from, if it has the the title of black metal and it falls within that genre there has to be the atmosphere has to be there more than anything else I think a lot of the major differences are for one obviously production value um, it's somewhat similar but different um, as far as uh, you know a lot of that old stuff was intentionally made to sound bad but in a good way now the stuff in America and the rules um, rural American black metal is made almost to sound colorful but not not like a beautiful colorful like you think flowers or sunshine it's colorful in the way you hear it there's more things going on there's more atmosphere there's a lot more washed out sound where you feel like you're just listening to it up in the sky and that it's that you just hear it for miles. Um, so I think that's the major difference in, from what I think of as American black metal compared to the old style where it originated. That was much more rock or thrash oriented. It was much more straightforward, guitar driven. Now it seems to be much more feeling driven. 
Um, and then I think as far as how they're similar is uh, the attitude of um, separateness, the attitude of people are not understanding you, the attitude, a lot of it's in the attitude. And I think there is a, a line of heritage in the production value and everything that we, certain bands like Panopticon or Twilight Fauna have tried to stick with. They've changed things around a little bit, but it still has this raw feeling. It still has this feeling that you're there with them, listening to them. You know, and that's a great aspect of it to me because you can sound raw and sound bad, or you can sound raw and sound amazing. You know, there's there's definitely an art form to it for sure. I would say that was the original intent of the music uh, to come across as being dark and and nefarious to use that theme. Uh, the imagery uh, is play, has always played a large role within within black metal, especially. There are definitely bands who are using the the template of black metal and expanding the the boundaries of it. Uh, those with outside of the genre, there there are many. So to, to say that that's the the case right now, I would say that's more of a stereotype, and it's it's really an outdated stereotype. There are still bands hanging on to the traditional imagery of of the corpse paint and the spikes and that type thing, but. I know within the Appalachian scene specifically, uh, that's definitely not the case. Uh, they just look like average people. I mean, of course, you know, they still like, they prefer to wear black, you know, wear the band shirts a lot of times. I mean, you, you know they're into the metal music a lot of times when you see them, but they're not holding on to that stereotypical imagery of, of being a black metal artist. Again, on this one, I, I think that that's definitely a part of the whole but I don't believe that you can relegate black metal as an art form exclusively to those subjects when it comes to explaining the unexplainable and to lived experiences. I think it's even bigger than that. We cover the realm of, you know, really a whole gamut of subjects, and I think that you can even hear it uh, tonally. Um, it, it's more than just lived experiences. I would say that I've lived a life, you know, full of industry and rep replication over and over, uh, also fabrication and just fakeness. And to get back to the real, like the real things in life was to get back to nature. And that's just what I try to do with the music. I do not feel that darkness and evil uh, is inherent in black metal. I feel that it is about who it draws in and what it inspires in them. I've heard so many people speak on black metal as itself having its own spirit of evil and blasphemy. That black metal itself is a ritual or it's an invocation. To me, black metal is just a genre of music, but inherent in that sound is a sound that is chaotic, epic, arcane, asphyxiating, and horrifying. That sound is the perfect match for subject matter and intention that is imbued in all of the darkest, most mystifying, most shameful, terrifying, violent, and mournful thoughts and words. It's the only music to me that can match the darkness and roar of the negativity in my own mind. The themes that we talk about, the uh, ideals that we hold true and and the phrasing that we use, the words that we use, they all require a particular backdrop. And that backdrop is black metal. They are ideas that can really only be expressed in their truest form through black metal. And I think that is one reason that you find black metal to be one of the most diverse styles of music there is because depending on what is being communicated 
and the feeling and the atmosphere that you are trying to create the music behind it is going to change and change drastically. It might be different instrumentation and entirely different ways of playing and despite its diversity it's all still black metal. For me if you play black metal, if you are black metal then it doesn't matter so much which instruments you're using, how you're putting things together, whatever you're doing is black metal. Uh, lyrics in the black metal, in my opinion, don't have to be always about Satan or, you know, uh, how bad we are or other stuff. It's, it's just like um, uh, putting truly uh, how you feel like about situations, about stuff about you and, and some stuff inside you if you have any pain or or feel good about um, something so it's nothing wrong it's, it's just part of the art you know don't have to be satan every time you know or some religion uh, it can be you know more uh, more a spiritual way uh, like relation human creator or something around us, you know. There are people out there, they're in a dark place in their life, and that's what they broadcast out of their heart. There's other people that really enjoy the atmosphere, the sound, the clouds, the trees, the voices of nature comes out through them. And so there's that too. Now, the whole like, face paint, the darkness. I mean, if that's what you want to do, that's what you do. But um, there is a depressive atmosphere with black metal, but I think it's therapeutic too. I think that it, it's kind of, uh, it's helpful to express if there's something dark in your heart, to express it outward so other people can see it, they can feel it, and also sympathize with it. It's, I, I agree, uh, I think that the uh, pain and darkness and I believe the word was nefarious, um, uh, atmosphere can be created a lot in black metal, but the way that we interpret black metal, you can't have pain without joy and you can't have death without life, you can't see death without rebirth, and that's a, a subject that we cover, um, I think, expansively in our music. You have to have both to really express and understand the feeling. I think that the ideology of black metal, so to speak, um, the thought pro I like to maybe use more of the term the thought processes behind the art form, could definitely liberate the, pe the people that listen to it, depending on how you mean by liberate. Um, if it could get people to question the way certain things in this world work, which I think that, that comes naturally with anybody that's in the metal. We like, we like to question why things are a certain way. And then when someone says that it, well, that's just the way it was, well, why was it that way? So I think that comes naturally with any metal artists. We're very rebellious type of people in the sense of wanting an explanation. Why is it this way? And I just want to know why. You know, we want we want um, authenticity. We want integrity. We want real stuff. You know, um, so I definitely think that if approached the right way, it can be done that way or it can make you more introspective. It can make you look at things and begin to say, uh, and begin to question things in a healthy way. You know, um, there's a lot in this world that is done certain ways just because somebody said 50 to 100 years ago that that's how we do it, but we don't understand why. So I think that that's definitely, it can help. And I think also at the same time, because when you have that community of people that all think the same way, that helps. That helps a lot. You know, iron sharpens iron. 
and it helps for people to have a place that they can express themselves um, in a healthy way. I think that it's leaving its mark because I think at the end of the day, it echoes something that every man knows and every man feels a connection to, and that's our, our humanity 